Okay, so if everybody is ready, we continue with uh, our last uh, speaker this morning. Uh, he's Drew Hart from uh, Trondheim, and uh, he's going to talk about uh, support varieties for tensor triangulated categories in algebra and topology. Thank you. Great, thank you, Javier. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have the opportunity to talk. So, so thank you. I just. Uh, Check the weather in Barcelona, and it's about 35 degrees warmer than it is here in uh, in Trondheim. So it would have been nice to be there in person, but uh, we do what we can at the moment. So yeah, today I, I'm talking about so the title, Support Varieties for Tensor Triangulated Categories in Algebra and Topology. It's going to be a talk in, in sort of two parts. Um, so the first part will be somewhat introductory. I, I hope um, most people can follow along. And then in the second half or the, the later part of the talk, I will talk about some, some new work in progress, um, which then necessarily has to get a little bit more technical. Um, so let me just jump straight into it uh, by talking about the, the sort of setup for the day. So I'll have So C is going to be some tensor triangulated category. And depending on your, your background, you can always keep in mind your favorite example. So maybe just like the derived category of say a commutative ring or maybe you like your representation theorist and you like the stable module category or your homotopy theorist, you like stable homotopy category. Okay, so just pick your favorite one and uh, the other notation I'll use is then to write this sort of C omega, this will be then the compact objects in C. So matching up with these examples above, this could be the, the perfect complexes. It's the finitely generated modules here and the finite spectra. Yeah, etc. So these just uh, can always keep in mind whatever whatever example of a tensor triangulated category you like best. And we're going to look at certain types of, of subcategories within C or within C omega. Um, so we can say that, and subcategory, let's just, uh, to stop me always having to repeat myself. So it's always full, always uh, stable. So it's it's closed under the triangulated structure. Oops. Okay, so we can say that a, this full stable subcategory is thick. it's closed under extensions and retracts, some subcategory is localizing if it is thick, And it's closed under arbitrary co-products. So I should ask that, that such things uh, exist. And then we have this notion of being an ideal. And this just means it's it's uh, whatever this full stable subcategory is, it's, it's closed under the tensor product. So let's say if X, is in D and Y is in 
is in C, the big category, then So tensoring with an arbitrary object keeps me in my uh, in my subcategory. So let me just make a couple of remarks. So one we can speak of thick thick tensor ideals, this is a thick subcategory that is also an ideal or localizing tensor ideals. This is a localizing subcategory that's, that's also an ideal. So we can combine A and C or B and C and get two just to, the, the notation is not optimal usually when, so uh, we will usually consider or probably always. So when we talk about thick tensor ideals, we're going to, we're usually looking inside this, this small subcategory. So of, of compact objects. Um, if we look in the, the localizing We always consider just thick tensor ideals in the in the subcategory of compact objects, and uh, localizing tensor ideals in the full subcategory. I see, there's some comments in chat. Are they questions? Or are they okay? So the question was: Does tensor triangulated include that the compact objects are the same as the strongly dualizable objects? And the answer is given also in the chat. It's a theorem in subcategories. It's not always true, but. Uh, for all the categories I, for all the examples I have today, I, I think it is true. I think it's, uh, I think there are no examples today where it's not true. So. Okay, so the theorem I want to start. So this uh, classification of thick subcategories or thick tensor ideas sort of started in stable homotopy theory, but following from this, sort of the next example and the easier example to describe is uh, is the following theorem. So it's due to Mike Hopkins, then with some corrections and extensions by Amnon Neiman. And so their theorem is that there is a bijection So this is this is the example of D of R. And let me just write out. So it's thick. thick subcategories of perfect complexes. In this case, every thick subcategory is a thick tensor ideal. This is automatic in this case. So I could also write thick tensor ideals here. Some maps that I will describe in a moment. So in bijection with So I should also say R is commutative. No theory and ring here, and this is specialization closed subsets of spec R. Okay, and let me, uh, I guess there are some advantages to using the iPad if I can cheat and Just copy this okay, and to the second part is that, so as I said, the thick subcategories are always in this, this compact objects, but I can also do localizing subcategories inside the, the whole category. And now these are just arbitrary subsets. Just yeah, arbitrary subsets. So what are these? Uh, what are these maps support and the inverse of support? So the 
So for X, so just a complex and uh, the support is those primes such that this is the derived tensor product with the residue field is is non-zero, so that's the support of an object. And then the support Okay, so for a localizing subcategory, I suppose I called it D before, then the support, I just take the union of all the objects in here of the sub individual supports. Okay, this gives me uh, a map from Use this from the thick subcategories or localizing subcategories uh, into subsets of spec R. And you can check that if, if this D was actually a, a thick subcategory, then it's specialization closed, meaning it's a union of Zariski closed uh, subsets. And the reverse map or the inverse map. Okay, so it's those complexes or just depending on which which one I use, whether it's it's subsets or specialization closed ones, uh, whose support is contained in this in this subset. Okay, and again, you have to there's something to check that. Uh, if I start with the subset that this is localizing or thick, depending on which which world I'm working it in, but uh, but this is true, and and these give the these are the inverse bijections here. Okay, so this is a this is a very nice theorem. It has a nice uh, explicit description, um, and then people I guess started wondering about about other categories. So I, I said here my sort of. So we had the we had a there was a thick subcategory theorem. It were well, the compacts in here, I guess you say here, which I didn't mention. And then there was the classification of thick tensor ideas here, localizing tensor ideas. And then so what about this one? Okay, and then there was Benson, Carlson, Ricard computed the the thick subcategories or thick tensor ideas here. Um, Thick tensor idea. So there is a difference in this case. And then people thought for a long time about how to classify the localizing subcategories. And I think there was a uh, good conjecture. People thought they, they knew what the answer should be, but it took a long time until I think 2008, 2009, around then for, um, for the solution to be given. So let me just describe how this goes and the sort of general machinery to make this work. So this is generalization due to or extension due to uh, Benson Benson Yenga and Krauser sort of I guess following some ideas of Hobby Strickland and Neiman, obviously, and Thomason also. So this, there's a lot of Ricard. There was a lot of uh, a lot of history. So I don't want to forget anybody's names here. So let me just put dot 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 dot. Um, but let me describe their their setup. So suppose so C is as as the start. It's a it's a tensor triangulated category. With an action in a sense that I, I don't want to make precise. So an action, I'll put it in quotes if I want, of a graded uh, 
commutative Noetherian ring R. So let me not say what, what, what all this means, but usually or often the R is just going to be the the graded endomorphism ring of, of the unit object inside this tensor triangulated category. Okay, so this is this is one that, that gives rise to this ring always gives rise to an action. It might not be no theory, but if it is no theory, and then you can try and apply their their machinery. Okay. And then so for each Each prime ideal in, so I just put spec H because it's graded, so I want homogeneous ideals. For each prime ideal uh, P inside here, what they do, they construct oops, an item potent object. I'm going to just write as gamma p of one and you can define a theory of support by this by just seeing for which primes in this spectrum does is tensoring with an object non-trivial. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to go into the description of how to build these uh, item potent objects and, and what they represent. Rather, I'll give you an example. And I, I always say they're sort of generalized local cohomology. Um, and why I would say this is, so if I take C just to be the derived category of a ring, we'll say again, R is commutative Noetherian, uh, then this gamma P of one is, so it's the total derived functor of Of local cohomology or of, or of torsion in my ring localized at P with respect to the, the maximal ideal in this localized ring. Okay, so in fact, and more generally, so this gamma P1 tensor X, this is nothing other than. This total derived functor applied to the P localization of the complex, in particular, so the homology or the cohomology So this is the thing that has the cohomology of this gamma P1 tensor X uh, is just It's the local cohomology groups in, in the sense of, of growth and deek of this of the localization of this complex. Okay, and what you can check is that this, this example they give in their paper, this agrees with with the support theory used uh, by By Hopkins and Neiman. Okay, and what you can do then, so that's the end of end of the example, is exactly as before. So we can construct maps. So 
So I can start with the set of localizing tensor ideals in C and with So I've defined support of an object. So I do the same as before, the support of a localizing tensor ideal. Oops. I just uh, take the union of the support of all the objects and I also have a map the same as before. So go down uh, between subsets of, which is defined exactly the same as before. So if I have a subset of, of the spectrum, I can just look at the objects whose support is contained in this subset. And you can check that this forms a localizing tensor ideal. Okay. And the notion they use in this paper then is, or well, the definition they give is, is stratification. So this is maybe a, one of those words that gets used a lot in, in mathematics, but so don't confuse it with maybe some other like stratified topological space or something, but C is, is stratified by R if the following, there's two conditions. sort of local to global principle, which is that, so given an object X uh, in my category, there's always a smallest localizing tensor ideal that contains X. So the localizing sub, localizing tensor ideal generated by X, that's what this lock C tensor X here means. And we can say that this is the same as the localizing tensor ideal generated by, by all these objects as P runs through alternatively, I could of course replace, uh, I could just take the primes in the support. Otherwise this is just zero. Um, but this one, let me just note, This sort of this this holds in some generality. They, they, this is a theorem that this always holds, at least if uh, so. For example, yeah, in this case, I mentioned that if R is just So if R is this sort of canonical action coming from the endomorphisms, this is this this is my uh, graded Noetherian ring, then this local to global principle always holds. So it's sort of this condition two that I'm about to write down is the more is the is the condition that's usually the hardest one to check. So let's uh, note that. So this well, before I write it, I guess I should just say something. So gamma P tensoring with this object, this, this defines a functor from C to C. And then I ask that, uh, so I just write this gamma P of C to be the essential image of this functor. And uh, so you can check so that this is a localizing So it's a localizing tensor ideal of C. And then the second condition is that is that it's minimal, it's minimal 
or zero, I guess, as a localizing Okay, minimal meaning that if there is some localizing tensor ideal uh, contained inside of it, then it's zero or it's all of gamma P of C. There's, there's no refinement of this. Um, and let me just name this, uh, didn't even use some. If these, these maps here, let's call them star, then the theorem C is stratified by R then the map star that these maps are mutually inverse bijections okay so example that we saw at the very start, so rephrasing is that if R if R is a commutative Noetherian ring, then then D of R is stratified by R. And then this, this encapsulates this theorem mentioned of, of Hopkins and Neiman. Um, so let me just make a, a remark. So if I have this stratification, the, the theorem was that this gives me these bijections, uh, but it also implies Has a number, a number of other consequences. So, for example, it, uh, you get the thick tensor ideals of uh, of the compact objects, uh, and as you may guess, instead of just being subsets of this spectrum of this ring, these are the um, specialization closed subsets of the spectrum of this ring. So this is also this part of this Hopkins Neiman result in this example. Uh, get some version of the of the telescope conjecture. Um, this is a conjecture originally made in the stable homotopy category where it's it's still open. Um, but in, in these cases where you have this nice stratification theory, uh, it's known that some version of the telescope conjecture holds. Um, and I mean that every smashing localization is generated by compact objects. That's the version. And there's some other things like a Sorry, Drew, may I ask yeah. one question? Quickly? Sure. Um, I, I lost a little track of the logic. What's the logic in the example now? You use the Hopkins Neiman result to deduce that it's stratified, and then or what, what's the logic? Does this give a new proof of this theorem? I mean, you could, uh, you could reprove that theorem, I guess. You just have to show this minimality condition, but this boils down to essentially doing uh, what, what Hopkins Neiman do anyway. So. You're I not, guess I guess you're not saying you have to approve this version of the telescope conjecture in DR or whatever wherever to to get that or what? No, 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 no. It's a it's just a language of of re of, I guess of uh, encapsulating these theorems, but it, it tells you exactly what you need to prove. I guess is you, you once you identify what these minimal uh, what these these gamma PCs are, then you have to show that these are minimal, basically. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it's, I guess it's just a language of reform. So this is actually used in the example of the stable module category um, to classify the localizing tensor ideals of, um, of the stable module category of a finite group. So I didn't want to talk too much about, about that one because I don't want to say what, what that is. Okay, so what is, what is the problem? This is very cool, but this 
this relies uh, So this relies on, on the action of a ring R. Um, and so the, the problem or the question is, is, you know, how can we remove this? This assumption, the reason being that we are, there are categories out there, sort of one example that, that I like as a chromatic chromatopy theorist is, is like the EN local category for those who know what that is, where the localizing subcategories have been calculated and there's not like a natural ring around that uh, that parameterizes them so how can we sort of soup up our stratification theory to to deal with these more general examples i guess it's the problem um and so for this i have to take a little detour and introduce the the Barmer spectrum so the Okay, so for this, I'm, I'm going to change from using, so D will now be my category. Uh, I apologize if I write C again, it's, it's a hard habit to get out of, but. So now D is going to be some essentially small TT category, but in, in all the cases, I mean, you can really just, it's going to be, it's something about thick tensor ideals. So I should be using the, the compact objects. Uh, this should be, for example, if I have my big ambient category, one of these, uh, this this D could be the compact objects in it. So, and the definition due to Paul Barmer is to say that so a proper thick tensor ideal inside my category D, we call it prime. If, well, it's it's sort of, it's by, by, uh, by algebra. So if, if I have X tensor Y lie in my uh, thick tensor ideal, sorry, they lie in, um, in P, then X is in P or Y is in P. Okay, and then the Barmer spectrum or the spectrum of a triangulated category Well, as a set, it's just a set of uh, of these But it's 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 more than just a set. It has like a Zariski topology. So with yeah, with Zariski topology yeah, like this. So. so it has a certain basis of closed subsets where these are my prime ideals. That intersect trivially with, with my S. Okay, so this is, this is the Barmer spectrum. Um, and what can we do with this now? Well, this also gives a support theory. So given an object X, I can look at the, I can look at the primes such that X is not contained in P and the theorem of Barmer
that this is the it's the universal support theory satisfying some axioms. So the universal support theory on the category that satisfies very sort of axioms you would uh, you would hope a support theory satisfies. So. Support of zero is empty. The support of the tensor unit, that's everything. And it behaves well with respect to sums. Okay, suspending doesn't change. The support, uh, if I have a triangle of this form, the support of one object is contained in the union of the support of others. And it has the tensor product theorem for supports. So the support of A tensor B just the intersection. Okay, and moreover, the support and the spectrum always classifies well so called radical thick tensor ideals but but in the categories uh, we talk about today i think uh, every thick tensor ideal is radical so i'm not going to say i'm not going to worry too much about this um yeah so there's an, always this bijection between thick tensor ideals of of D when I guess I also am, am lying again. So uh, we just also so I write specialization closed subsets just to be consistent. Uh, So this is uh, as long as at least if uh, it's an Ethereum topological space. If, it, if it's not, uh, have to replace specialization closed with so-called Thomason closed subsets. Um, it's just an, another type of, uh, of subset. But um, yeah, for, to be consistent with what I wrote earlier, I guess I liked to write specialization closed here. So. We had this Hopkins-Neiman theorem at the start that had thick tensor ideals of perfect complexes uh, was in bijection with the specialization closed subsets of spec of R. Um, so you will not be surprised then. So the the spectrum of these uh, perfect complexes this is spec r and i think this is even in this case even as as schemes they're the same so in this case this Barmer spectrum is a scheme and i think that's right okay so if I just jump back up for a moment, I said that uh, this consequence of stratification was that we get this classification of the thick tensor ideals of the compact objects. So in particular, um, they were in bijection with specialization closed subsets of spec of the ring. So this is in essence, this is saying that uh, the Barmer spectrum 
of compact objects in this category is just spec of R. So this is kind of, this is a consequence or like a hidden assumption in this stratification theory. So what I can do then is just, uh, is just, so the idea is just to redo the, the BIK theory now, but using this farmer spectrum everywhere. So to be more specific, let's, uh, so again, C is now one of my, my big categories. And so by more specifically, so by work of Farmer Favi and Greg Stevenson, In the same way as before, where I, I took one of my primes in spec of this ring. Um, well, now I can take a prime in uh, out of the Barmer spectrum of compact objects and And you can get out of this an item potent object, say kappa p, in the same way as we built this gamma p of one before. And then now for any x in C, so not just compact objects, then we can define a theory of support. So support of x. Will be those primes now in the Barmer spectrum, such that tensoring with this object is non-trivial. So, if I can scroll up for a second, uh, yes, I had. So this, it, 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 oops, that was not looking the other one. I wanted that. So before I had this support theory. All I've done now is, is build a different item potent object coming from the Barmer spectrum and define the exact same theory of support. So it's a very natural thing, but some of you might be worrying that now I have too many support theories because I had this Barmer support as well, which was defined, say, for compact objects, this one here. But it's it's still okay, it's good. There's not a, there's not any ambiguity here because. So if my object was actually compact, then then there's no problem. It, it, it agrees with the support theory we had from the from Obama's support. Okay, so now I can make the same uh, definitions as before. So you see, I can say that C is stratified by by its Barmer spectrum. And it's what you would expect. So there's this local global principle. Which says that it's the same as earlier, just using these kappa p's. And 
I said before that it holds often. So again, Greg Stevenson, or let's say has given uh... so for example if the spectrum is no theorem and yeah this c is like the a homotopy category of a stable model category or a stable infinity category or something, then uh, then it always holds. Um, and, and and some more general things than, than that as well. So again, the sort of more that that often the harder thing to check is that uh, sort of this again, I guess this is the essential image be consistent with the notation from before of of tensoring with this uh, item potent object so this is this is minimal as a localizing uh, tensor ideal so maybe uh, I can say an example of, well, maybe I can make a couple of a remark first, is that this, uh, So you, you can show that this this actually does extend the benson yanger krauser theory um, in the sense that if it's if it's stratified in their sense by a ring R, then it's stratified in this new sense by the spectrum of the ring, the the, the Barmer spectrum of the category. Is the question in the chat? Oh, okay. What's the relation between? Okay, this. There was a, the question in the chat was about the stable homotopy category, um, and the question in the chat was what's what's the relation between the spectrum of the stable homotopy category and the spectrum of the graded endomorphism ring? Well, the this is. Uh, This is a bit hard because this is this is not a very nice ring. This is not even a this is not even no theory. And so, but but you can ask in between, and then this one is just spec Z, and then it's uh and then there's a surjection. Okay, in this case, So I'm running out of room, but I don't want to just, yeah, this is the spectrum of the stable homotopy category for those who haven't seen it is kind of complicated. Uh, so I don't want to actually describe what it is and it's not no theory. And, and uh, this kind of, yeah, that's a good opportunity to say that um, this, this uh, stratifying, uh, it works well in when things, when the spectrum is no theory in, or maybe some like slightly something that's kind of close to no theory in, um, but the stable homotopy category is too wild. And uh, like it has some weird objects like the, the Brown commoners jewel of the sphere that sort of uh, tells you this, this classifying the localizing subcategories there is just wild. So, um, but the other example is like when you localize Stable homotopy category. So uh, I know a lot of people probably haven't haven't seen this then, but uh, so this would be the the en local stable homotopy category. Um, then the spectrum. compact objects here um, uh, 
it's just a set with uh, with n plus one elements, which I won't define because it's it's not relevant really for the talk. Uh, with the topology, it's determined by this the closure operation, which so the closure of this point is is all the ones bigger than it, and So this is an example where it's it's stratified by this uh, by this set of objects, and this is really just this is a reformulation of a so Hovey and Strickland have calculated the localizing tensor ideals, localizing ideals in this EN local stable homotopy category, and just rephrasing it in this language, what they do is they show it's it's stratified by the by the spectrum. So this is the example I mentioned earlier, where there's there's not really a nice ring around uh, that would do this. Uh, yeah, that it would be stratified in the sense of a of a like naturally acting ring. Um, okay, so that ends the first part of the talk. Now I wanted to talk about about the example. So necessarily might get just slightly more complicated, but let me try anyway. So it's an application. This is joint. Tobias Bartel and Baron Sanders. Okay. And it's in sort of, uh, it's, it's in a little bit equivariant homotopy theory. So let me just try and give a brief introduction to sort of the, the main players here. So G is a, just a finite group and so we have this sort of classical notion of a Mackie functor. So G Mackie functor, this is a pair of functors. So I have M lower star and M upper star. So this one would be uh, one's covariant, one's contravariant. So they agree on objects. Uh, they take disjoint union to direct sum. I should have said they're functors from uh, apologies from G sets to abelian groups. So the dis disjoint union of G sets to direct some of abelian groups. Um, so if I have a pullback, oops. Uh, Uh, takes that to, let's see. so I can write just they agree on objects so I just write this as m underscore a so I guess this is there's a number of equivalent definitions of Mackey functors I'll say another one in a moment this is sort of the most explicit description. Okay, and so take this uh, pullback to, I forget, this is a pullback as well, I think. Okay, it preserves pullbacks. Yes, 
okay, but that's that's sort of uh, the very explicit definition, but equivalently, one of the many sort of equivalent definition. So Mackey functor. So it's an additive functor. It's a functor that preserves finite byproducts from this category BG op from BG to ab where this is BG is the is the burn side category of G and it's the like the home wise A homewise completion of uh, this category that I'll call BG plus, which has uh, which has objects uh, finite G sets, the morphisms. It's the it's uh, this sort of category of correspondences or spans. So morphisms are isoclasses of spans. Of finite G sets and yeah. So this equivalent definition is is due to Linda, I think. Um, and why these are interesting for topologists is that they appear naturally in in equivariant homotopy. So the equivariant homotopy groups have the structure of a Mackey functor, a G Mackey functor. And but sort of more recent work is to sort of, I guess, ca categorify this a little bit. So due to Gyu May and uh, Clark Barwick and, and others have also done work is that very roughly says that G spectra can be modeled by now spectral Mackey functors. So before here, I was sort of abelian group valued Mackey functors. Uh, now I have spectral Mackey functors. So just try to say something a little, uh, I don't want to get into the like technical details of this, but uh, yeah, it's equivalent as a tensor triangulated category to say finite product preserving functors from this, well, this is like span category of the category of finite G sets into spectra in sort of some like uh, this is, maybe if you want to work, this is like, a, I think um, is it maybe an infinity two category or something, or like, is it, I don't know. It's, it's you have to use higher category theory to, uh, just not get the numbers right and just say it's an infinity category. And this is this is the Barwick approach. The Gyu May approach also works in some sort of uh, higher structured world. Um, it's a bit just uh, in a slightly different language. But the reason I introduced this now is to say, well, uh, sort of this. I had abelian groups before. Now I have spectra something that sort of fits in the middle of here, I can say is the category of some other category now where I, instead of using spectra, I use HZ modules. So it's, Or mod HZ or derived category of unbounded chain complexes of, of uh, Z modules. Just it's a two one category. Yeah, thank you. I knew I was getting the, the numbers wrong. Thanks, uh, Asaf.
just a true one category. <laughs> okay, I'm never good with uh, my category theory numbers. Okay, and just a remark that there was a, a very uh, sort of hands-on construction of a category of derived Mackey functors um, by Kaladin, and this agrees, or well, the homotopy categories agree with the category. Okay, and this, this is a recent result of Arakli Pachkoria, Baron Sanders, and Christian Vimar. So I think it was it was known to Clark Barwick. He says it in his paper, but uh, actual proof written down in, in quite some detail by by these three authors. Okay, so I want to describe to you the the Barmer spectrum here. So how do I do this? So let's say there are so in, in normal uh, equivariant homotopy theory, we have these geometric fixed point functors also have geometric fixed point functors here. So let's the TT functors, they're, they're symmetric monoidal, they also preserve compact objects. So there is a, a functor like this. So it, now the target is if I'm going to be consistent, I'll write it as yeah. So this uh, mod HZ is just the ordinary category of unbounded chain complexes of, of uh, abelian groups, and because, as I said, this functor preserves compact objects, and by then the functoriality of the spectrum. Well, as in ordinary commutative algebra, it uh, flips things around. So it's it's the Barmer spectrum of okay, and it's known that this is actually this Hopkins and Neiman result mentioned at the very start. This is just spec Z, and then so I can say I take a prime here, and this defines a prime over here. This was depending on, there's one for every H, so there's this H. So this is produces for me a prime, a, a TT prime in this category of derived Mackey functors, PGHP, and the theorem of of the three authors mentioned before, Pachkoria, Sanders, Vima, is that uh, every, these are all of them, so every prime Every prime is uh, is one of these PGHPs. As I run through all the subgroups and all the primes in, in spec Z, and moreover, two primes are equal if and only if The subconjugate in G and and P equals Q. Okay, so this uh, this theorem determines determines the set and. Uh, 
it also very nice paper also completely determine completely determine the, the topology here. So this is uh, in contrast to the equivariant homotopy category um, where it's known for like finite abelian uh, groups, but not it's not known in the, the, it's known as a set always, but the topology is not fully understood. Uh, in this case, it is fully understood for, for all G. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to write it out to save some time. I think I have 90 minutes, right? Was the is the total talk time? I'm just going to assume yes, unless anybody. Yes, yes, you have a few more minutes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but I will. I won't because it's not going to play any role anyway. Um, other than to point out uh, that the corollary of their results, if I had described the topology, um, oops, wrong spec. As a topological space, this this spectrum is is no theory, and and as I said earlier, when you have a category whose Barma spectrum is no theory, and you can hope then to apply this uh, this theory of um, stratifications here. Okay, and I also remark that uh, I had these two conditions. So I had this uh, there was. Oops, this was two minimality and local global principle. And let me just say th this one, we can apply. I mentioned that Greg Stevenson has given conditions um, that ensure the local global principle holds. So really what, if you want to prove stratification, you're, it boils down to checking the, the minimality condition. When the theorem in progress, I guess, it's pre theorem, but uh, you know, it's just a matter of just writing it up. And is indeed that so not only does this topological space uh, parameterize the, the thick tensor ideas. It also classifies the, the localizing uh, tensor ideas of the big category. Okay, so in order to do this, so we just said we need to show minimality for the prime PGHP, meaning we need to show that the category associated is this minimal localizing subcategory. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, there's, there's two reductions. Okay, the first reduction is what I'll call reduction to the local case. So there is a notion of a of when a, a tensor triangulated category is local. Um, and this has a, a few equivalent definitions. Um, I'll just choose the one that's that's most convenient, even though it kind of might not look anything like wh why would you call this local, but uh, you just have to trust me or read the Paul Barnes paper to see why it's reasonable that it's it's local if if the spectrum uh, has a unique closed point M. Okay, and then the 
Oops, I don't want to say that just yet. Uh, so one way to, to build a local category is that if so if P then I can always I can always form a new category by taking uh, the Verdier quotient by the thick tensor ideal generated by this prime. So this is like quotienting in the world of, of tensor triangulated geometry. Um, so if, if it's prime, then this, then this is a local uh, TT category. Okay, then the proposition, the first reduction step is the following that, okay, C then is gonna be a, it's a TT category with, just make sure it's like, it's no theory in. Uh, it's also, it's, it's rigid. This, um, again, this is just some technical hypothesis that I don't wanna to talk too much about and it satisfies Satisfying the so if C is a TT category with satisfying a couple of assumptions, um, then Oops. yeah. So C is, a, is one of my big categories. So I should be put here. So I can check minimality at a prime um, by checking it at the minimal point in the associated local category. So it satisfies. Okay, and so in the case of the derived Mackey functors, uh, for these primes where my subgroup H is, is the whole group itself. So this is taking the primes where H is G. Then this is just, the derived category of, of the integers localized at P. Uh, and then it's known that this category is stratified. Again, this is the, the hopkins neiman theorem mentioned at the start, which implies the minimality of this in this local category. So. Uh, this gives for the primes PGGP and also this uh, zero, where instead of ZP, it's uh, it's Q here, or HQ. Okay, so, so this, this deals with uh, prime H equals G and to reduce the second reduction step is, is to reduce sort of uh, all primes to this case. So this is then this finite etal extension part. So let's just what finite etal means in the TT world. So this one is a little technical, but uh, oops, call this one G. So I have a code product preserving functor between TT categories, then F 
this functor is finite et al. I never know whether maybe the dash is meant to go at the end. If they're There's some algebra object, commutative separable algebra object, A and C, whatever that means, uh, this just allows us to form the category of A modules internal to C, and that this is still a nice tensor triangulated category. What's well, finite et al, uh, so this is actually equivalent to the category G and moreover, I have this sort of factorization. So let's see, I have my original functor F to G, then this G was equivalent to C module, uh, to A modules in C and under this equivalence F becomes F A, which is just extension of scalars, so tensoring with this object A. Okay, so an example of a finite detail extension, uh, example is from the paper of Barma, D'Alambrosio Sanders, is that restriction, so Again, G is a finite group, H is a subgroup, or G is compact Lie, and then H is finite index subgroup. Okay, so this restriction functor is finite et al. And actually, this also passes through uh, into this world of derived Mackey functors. So there is a restriction functor here. This one is then also finite et al. Okay, and then the, the theorem relating this back to this minimality condition. So if I have the, uh, this is some finite et al functor Okay, we're both uh, both the Barma spectra uh, are Noetherian. I think I probably also want these same conditions before, like rigidity at least. Um, okay, and part of the infinite et al means that I get this induced map. On spectra. Okay, and then the condition is that as long as if, if this is a finite detail functor and so if I have a prime such that the pre image five P is just P. The minimality at P in G implies minimality at, at the image of this prime uh, in, in C. Okay, so we almost can apply this to a uh, to this one here, but we actually just want to apply this to it turns out that this there is still a finite etal um,
H H P. Yeah. Okay, and then so using basically using minimality for the prime. PHHP here, uh, we can get we can get the minimality in the and so we use the minimality in HCH, which we knew by this reduction to the local case. Uh, to get minimality for the PGHP um, in the in the B category of spectral Mackey functors, and that actually completes the proof and then the talk as well. So thank you. Oh wait, there's a question maybe. Oh, I'm five minutes over time. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your talk, Drew. So are there any questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question about, about um, the spectrum of, of uh, G equivariant uh, spectra. Yep. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, that it was known as a set for any, any finite group G. Yep. Uh, in what generality is, is it known as a set that, it, that this, these uh, geometric fixed points induce all the, all the correct primes? Yeah, so that, I mean, it's, it's, that is known for any compact Lie group. Uh, that it's exactly the ones coming from, from geometric fixed points. And there is even partial information known about the topology, just not a full description. Okay, but, but if you're looking at generality in the sense of uh, changing spectra with something else, like for instance, uh, uh, Z modules, and so you said that it was correct there as well, uh, but if you're changing uh, with another stable infinity category, is it still known? Oh, I see. Uh, it's not known, but I, like the techniques used in this paper by, uh, uh, by Irakli, Christian, and Baron, I think that would at least work for like mod R for a reasonable ring, and uh, like discrete ring, and yeah, probably also nice enough categories. Um, it would also work. So it's uh, it, it's only written down in then those two cases, but I, I think the techniques are pretty general that apply. Basically, the the point is that these geometric fixed point functors, at least in the finite group case, are like. Or also compactly group, they're jointly conservative functors, and then you combine this with the the Cetal extension business, and uh, yeah, it sort of then follows by an inductive argument. That's that's how they they do it. Okay, okay, thank you. No problem. Any more questions? Uh, so I was wondering if you could comment on the relation between this sort of theory of stratification over the Balmer spectrum and this uh, work of Ayala, uh, Maisley, and Rosenblum. They consider yeah. similar. That's, that's a good question. Uh, so there's, I guess there's this uh, also work of, of John Greenlees and, uh, and Scott Balkan. Um, and so I, I at least know a little bit about this, this work of Greenlees and Balkan, but so it, basically starts from the Barmer spectrum and then uh, builds like an algebraic model from, from knowledge of the Barmer spectrum. And then I think one advantage of the paper of, of Ayala and, uh, and Aaron and, uh, and Nick Rosenblum is that they're building these, these models, uh, but without, uh, without having to know the full Barmer spectrum. I th think I'm not an expert at all on this, but that that's uh, that's as much as as I can say. <laughs> is that is that uh, does that help at all? Also, uh, where does this definition uh, that you introduce for stratifying over the Balmer spectrum first appear? I, th I think it's it's not actually written down, so it will be in the paper of uh, myself, Toby, and uh, Baron. But it's it's in a paper by Greg Stevenson. He just, uh, I mean, all the definitions are in there, basically. He writes down the maps and everything. He just doesn't say the word uh, stratification. So, so certainly he, he knows it and uh, it's, yeah, just not using the, the word. <laughs> so it's his, I forget the name of his paper, but uh, it's probably support something or other, support theory or something. I see. Thanks. No problem. Can I, can I ask one thing? Of course. Uh, 
I mean, great talk. I enjoyed it, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, I know you guys have been also thinking about sort of chromatic uh, situations. Yeah. So how, how far are you in that such that you can, you can tell us quickly what's the Yeah. Step? So I can say and this also relates, I guess, to, to Maxime's question earlier. So if, if you put uh, the category of, if you put EN local spectra in the end, rather than just uh, like HZ modules, then the techniques that in, in your paper at least allow you to determine this as a, as a set, the spectrum. Um, we don't know how to, we don't know what the topology is in general. And uh, again, I haven't checked all the details, but it's also should be stratified in this case, like by the same, the same sort of reduction arguments, I think just work here as well. So, and there's yeah. not going to be any, you're not going to end up having some prime versus natural number being in some range or something, or it would work for any, any no, range. No, there's a, yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no large prime assumption here. In the same as the, the Hobby Strickland classification just works at, at any, uh, any height, any prime. So, yeah. I see. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks for the cool paper. <laughs> so is this sort of result related to, you know, chopping off the Balmer spectrum at some sort of finite height somehow guarantees the stratification theory works well? Is that basically yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when, when I said earlier, it works for like things that are that are no theory and um, and then the the problem is that the the Balmer spectrum in, in general of stable homotopy categories it's just too tall. But if you chop it off at a finite stage, then then it's uh, <laughs> then suddenly it's it's no theory and enough. Uh, it's no theory and then and it, and everything just works. But yeah. So an example that I that is is not no theory but it also works is rational G equivariant homotopy. Um, so so this is not no theory but it's this was this one I said like very vaguely it's close enough to no theory and and uh, this is one where it also works, so, which is just uh, that it's a result of John Greenlee's again just reinterpreted in this language. Okay, so if there are no more, no more questions, we thank the speaker again for his talk. Yeah, and so, so I just said, yes, Scott says in the comments, this oh, sorry. can be wide, but not tall, exactly. So the G equivariant homotopy is uh, rationally is wide, but it's not tall. We've truncated at height zero, basically. So <laughs> that's, yeah, maybe a comment for the, for the experts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I recall that there is no afternoon session today and uh, the workshop will continue tomorrow at uh, 9.30. Okay, thanks.